This is the first of a series of tutorial videos that covers the basics of using the VIC-3D Digital Image Correlation System from Correlated Solutions. Please note that every test is different and much depends on the unique parameters of specific test conditions. If you have any questions, please contact our support team who are always ready to help. This first video will cover calibration for 3D digital image correlation using the new laser marked targets from Correlated Solutions. In 2021, Correlated Solutions started providing laser marked calibration targets to allow for more robust calibrations. These laser marked targets are black anodized aluminum panels with the anodization removed by laser marking. While the new method provides much more precision and the targets are more durable, the surface of the panels can create more reflections both in the marked regions and outside area, which can make calibration more difficult in some situations. We will specifically address the reflection issue in this video. If you're using the previous white targets or printing your own targets, this tutorial will still be valid. As always, if you have any questions about a specific calibration setup, the engineers and our support team are ready to help. In the most basic sense, the purpose of calibrating the VIC-3D system is to determine both the intrinsic camera parameters, for example, image scale, focal length, image center, lens distortions, etc., as well as the extrinsic parameters of the stereo DIC system, for example, stereo angle, distance between cameras, etc. For this demonstration, we have a simple stereo camera setup with VIC-3D and VIC-SNAP to measure strain and displacement on a dog bone in an MTS Exceed Universal Test System. We're using two 2.3 megapixel cameras with 35 millimeter lenses with apertures set to F6. We have already applied speckles to the sample using a roller included in the Correlated Solutions Speckle Kit. When VicSnap is first opened, a prompt is provided to select the appropriate camera system. Select the camera system you have and click Accept. This is followed by the Project Options window, which prompts us to enter a file name prefix for the speckle and calibration images and the location for saving the images. In this case, the speckle images are labeled Test 1 and the calibration images are automatically labeled Test 1-Cal. At any time, if you need to return to the Project Options window to change file names or locations, just click Edit Files in the menu or toolbar. VicSnap provides several useful tools to focus the cameras before calibration. In this case, you can see that the camera on the left has been focused and we need to focus the camera on the right. Notice the crosshairs and focus icons in the toolbar at the top. These can be helpful to achieve focus and can be accessed in the newest version of VicSnap with the hotkeys C and F. Start with a focus tool. Next, unlock the aperture on the cameras and open to the widest setting, which lets in the most possible light. Then, reduce the exposure in VicSnap using the slider below the image, the wheel on your mouse, or the brackets on your keyboard. Then, unlock the focus locking collar and focus by spinning the lens itself until you move past the lowest predicted noise value. Then, return so that the sample is set at the minimum value. Relock the focus collar. Reset the aperture to a middle level and relock the aperture collar to increase the depth of field around the specimen. Then, increase the exposure in VicSnap to prepare for testing. When the focus is set, uncheck the focus tool. We are now ready for calibration. Before calibrating, it is important to consider how to illuminate the specimen. Let's take a moment to discuss the location and the angle of the lights. Here are a few guidelines. First, avoid placing lights directly underneath the cameras. LEDs can get hot and that can change the temperature of the air around the light. The resulting heat waves can distort the images. As this system is very sensitive to any kind of distortions, it may result in more noise in your displacements and strains, which means less accuracy overall. Next, avoid mounting lights between your cameras. This will create a hot spot in the center of the target and an uneven light wash. If the specimen has curved surfaces, a light in between the cameras will give problematic reflections, which can result in glare spots and missing data. Finally, for all targets, especially the new black laser marked targets, it is important to angle the lights to avoid glare. 
The official recommendation is to use oblique angles with the light shining at an angle greater than the angle between the cameras. Typical applications use two lights to wash across the surface of the specimen. Depending on the geometry of your specimen, more lights might be required. Now, with the lighting adjusted, we can begin to calibrate the system. Make sure VixSnap is in the calibration image mode instead of speckle image mode. Switch modes by simply clicking the button on the toolbar at the top. If possible, remove the specimen to calibrate. With a tinsel test frame like the one shown here, it's relatively straightforward to remove the sample and know precisely where to calibrate. For some tests, it can be helpful to mark the location of the specimen before removal so the calibration target can be placed correctly. It is possible in some instances to calibrate in front of the specimen, but this is usually not optimal because especially with very small specimens or extremely narrow depths of field, it may be difficult to position a calibration target in front of your specimen and keep it in focus while tilting. The calibration targets from Correlated Solutions are coded and have two unique markers which VIC3D will extract. These markers automatically communicate the size of the target to the software. This important feature removes concern about entering incorrect parameters. Please note, if the target does not have the two fiducial markers as shown here, the grid size will need to be entered manually for the calibration to run properly. The next step is to select the proper calibration target size. The best way to select an optimal calibration target size is to hold different size targets in front of the cameras to gauge the target size in relation to the field of view. The calibration target must be in the field of view of both cameras for the software to extract a single pair of calibration images. There also needs to be room to move the target in different orientations. If the target falls out of the field of view, it is generally too big. The three reference markers are most important and should be visible in every shot. In this case, we see all the dots are included, but the target is too big because there is no room to rotate it without one or more of the three reference markers falling outside the field of view. If the target is too small, the system has trouble resolving the distortions at the edge of the lens. If a target doesn't completely fill the field of view, a good calibration is still achievable, but specimen data around the edges and in the corners of the field of view may be less accurate. In general, it is better to use a target that is slightly too big than one that leaves a lot of space around the edges. Ideally, a target should cover 75-80% to 80 of the field of view of both cameras. Once an optimal target size is identified, and before capturing images with VixSnap, Move the target through the field of view to identify whether there are certain angles that catch more light. If this is the case, you may need to adjust the exposure. While it's okay to adjust the electronic exposure of the cameras during the calibration process, it's important not to adjust any physical parameters such as the position of the cameras or anything to do with the lens. In other words, don't adjust the focus or aperture of the cameras. To adjust the exposure, use the slider at the bottom of each image or the bracket keys. The two cameras are locked, so adjusting exposure on one camera changes both images. We recommend increasing the exposure to the point that the calibration dots are just overexposed, as you see here, and the reflections on the black regions of the target are minimized as much as possible. In general, calibration is better when the exposure is overdriven. This is shown by the dots turning red. We'll demonstrate this by comparing a calibration with a target overexposed and one with normal exposure. When the exposure is set, it is time to capture images. There are several capture options available in VixSnap. These include timed capture, analog capture, streaming capture, TTL capture, flex capture, and hardware triggering. However, it is generally preferable to take images manually instead of using a capture option. Using a capture option could cause motion blur if the target is not set when the capture occurs. To avoid this, it's best to use the spacebar or manually click capture once you know the target is completely still. Using the spacebar in VixSnap or the capture button in the VixSnap remote, take about 10 images while rotating the target in the vertical axis and about 10 images while rotating in the horizontal axis. 
Then take another few images rotating the target in plane. The goal is to create a diverse data set of points in different locations. We recommend taking between 20 and 30 images in total. As you capture the images, notice the files appear on the left side of the screen with the extraction points. An overlay appears once the points have been identified that changes them from red to green. Keep track of how many images you've taken with the counter here. As you capture images, watch out for your fingers and shadows. Try to tilt the target as much as possible to avoid glare while still being able to extract points. Calibration can be tricky for one person or in unusual testing situations where the sample is far from the computer. This is the reason we have developed the VicSnap Remote app. Available for Android and iOS, this app allows users to conveniently view live images during camera setup, adjust exposure, and acquire images using a mobile phone or tablet. In this example, 26 images were taken. Remember, zero is the first image, and the overall calibration score is 0 0.018. This means that the average distance between the extracted location of each point and its predicted location is less than two hundredths of a pixel. Any score below 0 0.1 pixels will be shown in green and is acceptable for DIC. Scores above this threshold will be shown in red. Scores that aren't registered at all stay black. While scores can vary greatly with test setup, lens selection, camera selection, and more, in general, the lower the score, the better. Next, quickly glance through the information provided below the images in the left window. Start by making sure the center X's and the center Y's make sense. In this case, the size of the sensor is 2.3 megapixels and the cameras are vertically oriented. So we have 1200 pixels in the X direction and 1920 pixels in the Y direction. The rig or beta angle is the angle between the cameras. This should be between 15 and 30 degrees. Here, the angle is 23 degrees. The baseline distance is the distance between the center of each camera's sensor. To get more information on any particular image set, simply click on one of the numbers in the left window. This will bring up the image in question so problems can be identified. Zoom and move the image as needed to get the best view. To inspect the images, be sure the pan button is clicked. This will give you the hand icon as shown here. The select button allows selection of a specific subregion for clipping or analysis. Remember, if you rearrange the windows in VicSnap, selecting the O key will revert back to the default view. As you can see, image set 3 had a problem. We got 140 points registered in the left image and 0 in the right image. When we click on the image, the problem becomes clear. The glare in the right image has caused a failure of the points to extract. If enough points are not extracted, the program will drop the image set altogether and not include it in the overall score. Note, in some older versions of the software, it is necessary to manually remove poor images to improve the calibration score. In general, calibration is possible even with some glare, as you can see when we scroll through the individual image pairs. In this case, we have a great score. Now, let's reduce the exposure and compare the quality of the calibration. We will lower the exposure so that we see no red dots at all. After taking another set of 26 images, click Analyze and we can see the score is now 0.030. This is still acceptable, but almost twice as high as the previous example. If we dig into the details, we can see that the program has a more difficult time calibrating and more image pairs are dropped. The individual scores are higher as well. This successfully illustrates our mantra, brighter is better in DIC. The more light, the better. With the calibration complete, we are ready to move forward with the test. The next video will cover best practices for test image acquisition in VicSnap. The process of calibration is essential to successful digital image correlation. 
Every setup is different, so there can be challenges. Our US-based support team is ready to guide you through the process. Just get in touch if you're having any problems or have any questions about a particular setup. Thank you for watching.